Hey. Sure, to back at lightweight, I guess. Is this, is this permanent? I mean, can you just call it now and say this is your division forever? <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, they're going to let me go back down, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not even your choice that it's No, it's not my choice. It's all right, though. How much different is it for you, though? Like, I mean, is it just a matter of, like, fight week cutting, or is it, like, has, is your whole life easier, or? or? Oh, yeah. Um, my whole life is definitely easier, more, more enjoyable. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm healthier. I get injured less. And, you know, I think just overall genuine quality of life is just better, you know? So with all that said, you know, you're saying, like, it wasn't your choice. Do you think the competitor in you or the, or the stubborn fighter in you would still go down to 45 if they would let you, even though you just said it's far better life for me? I mean, I think about it sometimes, um, but do I want to be bigger or do I want to be better, you know? So the guys at 55 are, I'm always the smaller guy. Uh, whether it's, you know, I might not be the shortest guy, but I'm always, sh you know, length, my arms and, you know, they're usually bigger than me, uh, but it is what it is, man. You know, there's a lot of really great champions that were considered small, so what's the difference? Did you feel a, a strength difference in the last fight? Uh, Joe is a large boy, <laughs> man, I should say. He And everyone, you know, when I got home was like, man, he looked so much bigger than you. And when I watched the fight, I was like, he, yeah, he definitely was bigger than me. But I won, and... You know, I think there's, you know, pros and cons. Like, guys slow down when they're bigger than me. And, uh, you know, I think I could fit into certain spots a little better and move a little better. And I feel better smaller. Like, I, I feel like I'm faster and move better on my feet and cardio-wise. So, like, you know, I got to take what I can, you know. Very nice. All right, well, your second matchup, Grant Dawson. Um, it, it's funny, right, because you probably weren't, like, scouting this division, or do you watch everything, or do, were you not really? I mean, there no, were just, no, like, I, new names to you? No, I watch everything. I watch every fight, yeah. So, so. Uh, when you got this name, I mean, uh, I guess familiar already? What do you, what do you think? Oh, yeah. Um, I was happy because, you know, I was supposed to fight Alves, who is one and one. This is my 10th UFC fight, and no one knows him, and he's dangerous. So it's like... I was kind of like, uh, all right, like, I guess I'll have to take it. Um, but there's way more reward when I beat Grant. So, you know, he's 5-0-1. Oh, and, one, and uh, you know, I think that uh, it should, or getting close to top 15 after I win. What did you make of his last fight, right? Because great performance until it wasn't, right? So, which, yeah. I mean, what side do you look at? Um, I mean... You know, my goal is to always break people in my fights anyways. So when I saw that, you know, this was obviously before I got the matchup. I was like, oh, wow, like, Grant kind of got tired there. Uh, Rick is also really good, though, Rick Clinton. He's, you know, he might not be the most well-known guy, but he's a savvy, crafty veteran. Uh, and he's long and tall. So, um, you know, he made it difficult for Grant in some spots, and I guess it tired him out a little bit. Uh, but, you know... I, I'm going to have to use that to my advantage. He's gone through a camp switch. Um, I mean, one camp, is, I mean, is that enough? Like, you've, you've watched this guy. Can he be a different fighter in one camp at, at a new place, or do you just go, no, I, I kind of know who he is? I don't think that you'll change all that much in two months or whatever, he's, three months, however long he's been down there. Uh, but he could definitely learn some new tricks. You know, little things make a big difference. Um, but I don't expect him to be completely different, especially under the lights, uh, you always tend to revert back to your instincts. And, you know, like, in order to, you always revert to like two or three things, you know, and then it takes months and years of drilling other things. And in your subconscious, those two or three things will fall out. And without you even realizing, the new things you're learning are coming into play. Uh, but it takes lots and lots and lots of repetitive drilling and drilling and drilling. So maybe he did drill for, you know, an hour every day for the last three months. But, you know, it takes years. So we'll see what happens. You said it. I mean, a recognizable name here, maybe borderline top 15. I mean, I know you're kind of just easing your way into the division, but you win here. Do you start calling out some names and trying to make some matchups? Or do you, you um, man, I haven't, I haven't even looked at I don't know the order of the top. I mean, I know the top guys, but, you know, I'm not looking past Grant, 
you know, and you know, I'm, uh, I don't want to fight backwards, but I'm, I'm just going to see what happens. And, and you know, I'm going to say like, oh, I think I'm ready for a top 15. You know, I'm not going to call anyone's name out though, because I haven't even looked. So. Yeah. Uh, last thing for me, uh, you know, obviously win is important here, but is it important to you to get a finish? I mean, I know if there's been a criticism, it's been, ah, it's always decisions. Does that matter to you or is a win a win? A win's a win, but I definitely want a, you know, spectacular performance. Uh, I've been criticized, you know, for, for just winning fights, um, <laughs> which I don't know, to me a win is a win, but, um, you know, if I want to make a statement and get a top 15, then I should, you know, I'm looking for the finish, so. Uh, after your last fight, you mentioned that uh, you just grinded it out, and that just always seems to be the story of your life, yes. every fight. Do you uh, expect, is that the plan? Every time you're going to these fights, are you just preparing yourself for just a grueling affair? Mm, I mean, I'm always preparing to go three rounds, yes, but I don't want to go three rounds every time. I, I would like to get in and out of there. Uh, it's just the way, you know, the, the cookies crumbled for me. Uh, I haven't had a finish since my debut, my UFC debut. But before that, I was finishing guys, you know, and then the level of competition goes up. And, you know, there was also a point where I was on a two fight losing streak. And I was like, all right, I just have to win this. I just got to win to keep my job, you know, and, you know, I had to treat it as a business for a little bit instead of trying to treat it as an entertainment uh, spectacle for the fans and stuff like I needed to keep my job so but on a three fight winning streak and I've gained a lot of experience I'm ready to show out your last loss was the current lightweight champion Charles Oliveira back when you fought him did you feel like he was championship material I mean he was on a six fight winning streak I think all finishes before me so uh, I knew he was really really good uh, and he also had a boatload of experience before that. But when I lost, we were in the hotel room and my wife was like, he's gonna be the champion. And then we watched him. I think he fought Kevin Lee and then he fought Ferguson and then so on and so on and look where he's at. So it, it's almost, that loss aged super well for me. It's like, oh, he's on a three fight losing streak. His last loss is to the champion. Like, it like almost sounds good, you know? So, um, but yeah, I, he's obviously championship material. Thank you. That's it? Easy. All right. All right. Thanks.